Today, we're gonna to take a look at an app that leverages predictive AI and how to publish it on MelderX with both CDS hooks and EHR launch. Let's start by checking out the app, which is called EHR Plus. This is a demo app that we've written and it does a few things. Quick disclaimer, this app is using simulated AI rather than the real thing, but we're gonna pretend it's real for now. This app is designed to work with Smart on Fire and it can act as a fire data viewer but it also can generate fire tasks for a patient based on predictions made by an AI model. You can see here that when I click on the tasks, it generates the recommendations ranked by confidence. When I select the task, it creates the fire task resource on the back end. Pretty cool. We're looking at this right now as a standalone app, but the app has also been implemented to support both CDS hooks and EHR launch. We've included a link to both of the specifications for these in the video description. So what we want to do is we want to take this app and we want to make it available on MeldRx so that any EHR can use it. We're going to go over how you would do this for both CDS hooks and EHR launch, starting with CDS hooks. If you already have a MeldRx account, head over to app.meldrx.com and log in. If you don't have an account, you can register for one and be up and running in a couple minutes. Once we're logged in, we're going to start by creating a standalone workspace. Once that's created, I want to upload some patient data. I can do that either as a fire bundle or I can do that as a CCDA. I'm going to use a CCDA and upload Alice Newman. I can see here that the patient is loaded up and ready to go. If I click on it, the patient loads and we can see the CCDA and all of the data that's associated with this patient. Next up, I'm gonna register a new app. For this one, I will choose CDS hooks, give it a name, and I'll paste in the CDS service URL, which you'll have if you follow the CDS hooks spec. Then I'll hit register. You don't have to do this now, but if you click publish, you can see that there's a number of URLs that you can fill out. You can select whether it's predictive or evidence-based decision support intervention. It's a good idea to do this before you make your app live for other people to use it. I'm just gonna fill it out real quick and hit save. Now that we have both a workspace and a registered app, let's go into the workspace settings and activate the CDS Hooks app as an extension. What are extensions? Extensions are literally apps that have been loaded into your workspace for use. You can grab them from the public directory of published apps or from your organizations. I'll click on extensions, active extensions, activate extensions. And for this one, since I haven't published it publicly, I'm just gonna choose my organization and hit next. I can see the app that I created, this EHR plus CDS hooks. It's a predictive DSI type. I'll hit select and activate extension. Now to test this, what I can do is go back to the patients tab and load up the patient. And I should see some alerts showing up now. Previously, there was no alerts because there were no extensions activated for this workspace. But if I click on that, I can see the CDS card, which the CDS card is also based on the CDS spec. There's a couple things I can do. If I click on the top one, it will actually load EHR plus with the patient context. If I click on the second one, it is going to go create a task, a blood pressure monitoring task on the back end, which if I click it, the alert will go away. If I go into all data and scroll down to the bottom, I can see that this task was just created this ad daily blood pressure monitoring and it was added right now. If I wanted to do EHR launch, I'm going to go back and create a new app this time a provider app. So I'm going to click on provider. I'm going to give it a name, EHR plus provider. We'll do public authentication for scopes. There's quite a few that I'm going to use. I'm going to do MelderX API, CDS, profile, open ID, launch, and patient start star. Hopefully that's all the right ones. I'll use a redirect URI and then I'll add the EHR launch URL which again comes from the EHR launch specification. Next up, 
I'm just gonna skip over anything to do with linked apps and register. Now, if I wanted to go back into this provider application and fill out all of these URLs again, I can definitely do that. Notably, if I click on predictive DSI, you'll see that the source attributes are here and these all need to be filled out before publishing an app publicly. I'm gonna hit cancel for now, go back to the workspace, click on the workspace and activate a new extension. This time, again, from my organization, I will choose EHR plus provider. The reason the CDS one doesn't show up is because it's already been activated. Select, activate extension. I can see that I have these two extensions activated. If I go back to the patient chart, this time I can see that EHR plus provider shows up in my EHR app launcher. I'm gonna click on that. Be sure to read over the permissions that are being requested. This is really important because you don't always know what an app is trying to retrieve. I've read over this. I'm pretty confident that this is gonna be okay. Let's hit allow access. Now I can see the patient. I can also add tasks. I can see the blood pressure monitoring task from earlier, but I'm gonna create a new one. This time it's gonna be based on weekly exercise. I'll hit save and the task has been added to this patient's chart. Now, if I go back, to the MelDirx patient chart and look under all data, scroll down to tasks. I can also see that that shows up here now as well. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join our Discord and ask there. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.